Welcome to Lobster Magnets Review the Channel the Review. I'm here yet again by myself to provide you with my review of the issue. Yes, that's right. I am the only channel on YouTube that is giving Uber coverage because me and Alan Moore are the only people who like it. Aside from you nice people in the comments who also like Uber, which is nice, and the new people I've turned on into it with my wonderfully epic video essay that I love so much. Um, thank you, people, and I hope you're following along with me. Now, this, uh, chapter, like, the last issue we got was fucking amazing. It was, like, one of my favorite ones in the entire series. This chapter wasn't bad by any means, but, like, uh, Kyrian Gillian, like, has a habit of sort of, like, you know, I'd say the th three best chapters in the entire series are issue 11, um, you know, with the scene with, uh, you know, Hitler's death as well as, um, Winston Churchill's death. Issue 21, when Maria versus Siegland, and of course, Issue 7, where the Zephyrs and slash Tuskegee Airmen are unveiled, and it is epic and beautiful and fucking wonderful, and I love Issue 7 so much. Um, so this issue is a more compact story. It does give us something that we've been looking for for a while, which is a Maria and Drevnov's training of assumingly the Russian battleship candidates, because they've got like a shit ton over there. Uh, you know, uh, if they can get all those poppies all, uh, ready to go, that's the end war, and possibly, you know, uh, leading to the domination of Russia for years to come. Um, but, you know, the main purpose over there is, like, not so much to, like, get more Russian battleships as much as it is to get a battleship who can, um, you know, use the transmutation skills to produce, uh, Catalyst as well as Maria does. Because uh, the, the, the Russia is sick of Maria. They hate the fact that she won't do anything. She could completely win Germany just by walking over, but she single-handedly refuses to. And just does not give a shit, and there is nobody who can make her do otherwise. As we yet again have, like, you know, good old Molotov coming over. I wonder if he's, like, a real historical person. I want to kind of check or see if he's just, like, a... Um you know, a uh, fictional historical character. Uh, you know, he goes over to Maria's little gulag that she's made for herself, and, you know, it tells like the situation, you know, the main force of Germany is, like, fighting with the Americans. Uh, please do something to help. We, you know, you could go, all they have left is Siegland, and you've already crippled her. You could easily finish it. You could completely, you know, really help out the world, and she's like, fuck no. You, you know what? You, you treated me like a lab rat, and I don't even hold a grudge for that. So don't, don't fucking push me. I will defend Soviet Union if the Germans come. I will make you catalyst, and I will try and train someone to do what I can do. That is all. So <laughs> she states that pretty bluntly. And, you know, this is something I've definitely been, like, very curious to see, like, what she's up to. Um, although this was not what I was expecting at all. But, you know, th th there's a little bit of a frustration in the sense that, like, we only spend... Um, we pretty much spend the entire issue with her and the, you know, Russian battleship candidates who were, um, you know, kind of, like, stuck with her in her training gulag. And, you know, after, like, the huge revelation of the last chapter with uh, Zephyr's debut and taking out a battleship, uh, I, I am dying to know what is going on with the rest of the world. How is Germany reacting? How is the U.S. after their fear victory? Um, how's, uh, the preparation against the Japanese battleship, uh, going, given the fact that the two, you know, uh, African-American heavy cruisers, are, are they going to be able to, uh, do, be able to do anything? Um, you know, these are all engagements that I'm, like, dying to learn more about. So I, I guess for this issue, I was kind of hoping for more of, like, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of showing us all around the world and what's going on, um, that Kyrian occasionally does, where he gives us, like, a little spectrum of all the different sides. But, uh, we just stay in one place, and it's very similar to, like, after issue 11, there were, like, several, you know, sort of, like, self-contained issues, like, issue 12, focused on Stephanie, uh, and, like, you know, sort of, like, kind of, was sort of, like, a character portrayal about her, and her all of her lying, and how she sort of copes with the fact that, you know, she has this miserable existence where she just experimented on people as a part of the Uber program, turning them into piles of human mush. Uh, then after that, we got a f issue focusing on uh, Maria's transformation um, and about her, like, in the wilds of Russia. 
uh, and all that's wild were like telling us, oh, something, something happened, something happened in the English Channel, something happened, something big happened. And then eventually, like, we finally learned what happened in the sense that, um, you know, the Blitz Venture unveiled. And they set, sort of bail Siegeland out and, you know, kind of alter the course of the war, given the fact that they give Germany the opportunity to completely dominate in sea uh, and, you know, basically destroy any trade routes. Um, but so this issue is entirely focused on Maria and her little gulag. And it's funny because, like, Maria was definitely one of, like, the best characters, uh, you know, a lot of people's favorites, you know, best girl, as they say in the anime parlance. And she definitely kind of fit that mark, but this, like, shows a far more sadistic and villainous side to her, given the fact that, like, she has this, like, horrible gulag, and, and like, you know, she can't tell anyone to, like, oh, oh, yeah, you just gotta stare at it like this, and, you know, use the distortion energies, and think red muck, and then you'll get catalyst. No. She, like, has this entire scenario to, like, sort of recreate the trauma that she went through in her gulag, and that's her method to try and teach someone how to, um, you know, uh, be able to uh, use the distortion halo to build shit, is to just traumatize them with the same shit that she went to the point where, like, you know, the, the poor blonde woman, like, uh, Oleg or whatever her name was, uh, you know, just, like, w wakes up at night, and that was also a really creepy detail that she, like, uses her eye to, like, create these, like, human flesh bodies that just, like, breathe statically. That was, like, so fucking wonderfully creepy. I definitely enjoyed that. And, you know, and then she wakes her up in the middle of the night and says, Run, or else I will kill you. And then she just stalks her in the fucking Siberian wilderness as she's forced to, like, hide in the snow and then run during the day in this horrible, desperate struggle to ultimately see if, you know, she can be driven insane or, you know, finally come to a realization of what she needs to do. And, you know, she does. She finally gets it after being, you know, pushed to the point of no return where and losing three other battleship candidates to were pushed beyond their limits. She finally does. And, oh, God, Maria, you are a horrible monster of a teacher. You were like the best girl. <laughs> but now it, it's kind of like uh, Kyrian Gillian is sort of implying that, like, Soviet Russia was going to, like, want to get rid of her. And, you know, they, they have plenty of good reason for it. Now the sort of audience has a reason to kind of root for her downfall in the sense that, like, she's this horrible, abusive teacher who is this, like, terrible method of uh, kind of self-mutilation in terms of, like, tr try and teach her methods. So, but the real question is, she, she's still easily the strongest battleship, uh, probably the, the strongest woman person in the entire world right now, given the fact that, like, she, through her, you know, mystical super geniusness, was able to, like, you know, uh, skew her ratio, uh, the ratio of her activations more towards her, uh, you know, Halo, we don't know what the ratio is, but, like, you know, just from a guess, it feels like she's got, like, I don't know, you know, a total battleship can hold 24, so she's probably got, like, six strength activations, and then maybe, like, the rest uh, are all Halo, which is why her Halo is, like, so effing powerful. Uh, so, you know, even with the, like, the battleship who's, uh, you know, finally, I don't, they, they haven't told us if she's fully activated. My guess is she's probably, like, maybe a heavy cruiser level, but, like, even her, you know, she probably doesn't have a stand chance of, like, defeating Maria. So I, I sort of wonder if, like, Maria's storyline is going to end very tragically with, like, you know, once all of the uh, Soviet battleships are activated, out of all the potential recruits, they just all turn on her and kill her in her sleep. And, but, uh, you know, the whole point of that would be, like, a huge loss, considering the fact that, like, you, you can't take out Maria easily without casualties. There, there, there's no way anyone's going to get out of that, you know, clean cut. You, you, you're you going to inflict damage. You're, you're better just, like, leaving her alone. But, you know, it looks like she may not be long for this world. But, you know, it was a great, like, sort of self-contained story that I definitely do appreciate, but it's the kind of thing that, like, kind of annoys me as, like, you know, a guy who's, like, reading this month to month. Like, I love Uber so fucking much, that I, and there's so many things I want to see. I want to see what's going on in the rest of the world. I want to see what Patton's doing. Uh, you know, I've gone off, and, like, one of my favorite things to do is, like, every few weeks I go and check on, like, you know, 
uh, previews world or something to see if they've like uploaded the chapter covers for the upcoming issues or check the solicitations in Diamond to see like what the new future covers are to see if I can glean any clues from the product description or anything else about what exactly is going to happen next in Uber. And I use those to like, you know, give me little details. So I'm super excited to hear that like in the next issue, supposedly Leah Cohen and, and uh, Patton are going to team up and somehow Patton's going to be able to use Leah and, uh, you know, get her out of that little fucking uh, shipping container she was left in, you know, back in Chapter 4, and somehow uh, use her for his offensive into the Alps and, uh, you know, to catch the Nazis off guard. I'm really curious to see what Patton does. Uh, I want to know what the battleship Yamato is doing uh, now that he's, like, stuck in America, the most powerful Japanese man ever who's wreaking vengeance, and he's just kind of, like, wandering around the San Diego countryside. Is he going to go Los Angeles? Are they tracking him? Is the Japan able to support him? Uh, what is going on with that guy? And you know, originally, I, what I thought was going to happen is I thought like Maria was going to like you know uh, turn all the Soviet battleship candidates, fully activate them, and then she was just going to like lead them into like Soviet Russia because like Kieran Gillian said that like invasion wasn't just the invasion of America it was there were multiple invasions but now it just seems like you know it's like the invasion of like Patton into like Europe and like the invasion I, I guess of America from Japan and Germany uh, I, I thought it was going to be the second invasion was going to be like you know, uh, Maria, like, leading, like, you know, these Soviet battleships to, like, kill Stalin and, like, create this new super communist republic of, uh, of the fucking, um, you know, Russia. Uh, because she's, like, the ultimate communist superpower warrior. Like, you know, forget Che Guevara. You know, all you little liberal kids who want to, like, say, fuck democracy, I love communism, you should all get uh, posters of Maria and Drevnov on your uh, fucking dorm rooms. You should all have t-shirts of her. Uh, you should just, like, worship the altar of this psychotic man-woman uh, because she is the ultimate, you know, animal avatar of the worker's spirit. And, uh, you know, she's pretty good. Up, well, up until now when she, like, kind of, like, lost a lot of major sympathy points. You know, generally the heroic characters don't, like, blow off the hands of innocent people. Uh, then generally that's only what you leave the Nazis to, so she, she gets a little less uh, sympathy points now. And it feels like Kieran Gillian is kind of like, you know, bracing audiences to not like her as much. So when, you know, she does meet some horrible grisly aim um, that, you know, we're sort of, we understand why, what led to that. Uh, even though she is like the hero of the nation and, uh, but, you know, she has l less than stellar means in terms of how she wants to, you know, uh, be a hero or at least teach her heroic skills that make her so creative. And, you know, her creativity is kind of like a terrifying thing. You know, she creates this fucking gulag. She creates these, like, human flesh bodies to simulate, you know, sleeping people in a gulag. And she, you know, hunts her like candidates, the people she's supposed to be raising and teaching in the fucking snow. Uh, and, and just sort of terrifies them and pushes them beyond, which, and blows off their fucking hand. And, you know, after we see the fates of the three people who disappeared, you know, it's harder to sympathize with her. Uh, and, you know, the sort of, like, postscript, like, historical narrative sort of implies that, like, you know, Maria Andrevnov has this sort of ambiguous Amelia Earhart fate, so... You know, we can only assume that, like, you know, nothing good is going to happen to her. And as much as we're rooting for her to, like, you know, fight more Nazis, Kyrian Gillian has far, you know, greater aims for her that may not necessarily be what we expect. I certainly was not expecting what was going to go on this chapter, so it certainly surprised me. And, and you know, it, it was a good issue. Um, it just... You know, uh, with Uber, it's it's frustrating. You know, I want I want to see all the good stuff. I want to see everything. Um, so you know, I'm just kind of pissed off that I have to wait another month to see what happens next. But you know, it's not out of character for storytelling. Kieran's done after he does his big bombastic uh, show-stopping moments. He he generally tends to slow things down with like a more personal, character-driven story. And this is definitely like um, you know a very entertaining, very <laughs> character-driven little piece that uh, told us a lot on the Russian front. 
So, sadly, here I am. Now I'm done with Uber, and now I gotta wait another month for another chapter of Uber. Uh, I completely forgot to give a um, score for my Attack on Titan review. Um, if you watched that and you saw this video, um, I think that chapter was like more like a 7. Um, well, this is an 8. I would give this an 8. It was definitely a good, solid piece of storytelling. But, you know, I was, I was disappointed. I didn't even get, like, you know, the little uh, two pages that Kieran Gillian does of his little diary thing, which, like, talks about, like, his story influences. I love those. And plus, they, he's also kind of, like, drops clues for the future of, like, what he's planning. Um, so, and considering that I'm so desperate for every single story development and plot beat that happens in Uber, I crave those, like, crack, like, Ugh, I want them so badly, Kyrian. Why aren't you just, like... Ah, I want more Uber right now! Ugh. Well, anyway, though, I hope you guys, um, you know, are enjoying uh, Uber Invasion as much as I am. Uh, hope you enjoyed this story. I certainly did. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. As you know, I'm super passionate about Uber, and I love responding to your comments. Um, did you enjoy this? Are you afraid that the Russian best girl is not going to make it to the end? Um... Do you feel like this was not a good development? Do you cannot wait to see what Patton does with his, uh, you know, tank man powers? Uh, so many questions, so little time, so few answers. Why can't Uber be like a 40 page a month comic? Ugh, I just want so much more content. Ugh, but I have to wait again, again, and again, and again. Um, but thank you for, um, watching my call. Um, you know, listening to this review, like, comment, subscribe. I always love that shit. I'll include, um, you know, a link to this issue or another issue of Uber. Uh, so if you haven't read it, you can go click the affiliate link and get it from there and give me a little bit of cash and, or get something else that you want. So again, thank you for your, all your time to listen to me hear a rant and review and ramble and give my thoughts on my favorite comic, uh, running right now. And I hope to see you guys, uh, soon. And remember, lobsters and tennis, but don't you grab it.